Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS all in one. In today's video, I will show you how to build a half wall for your gazebo or pergola. And I will also show you how to make an opening for this type of half wall as well by adding an extra post. A half wall such as this works great for a little privacy, but it also adds a little shade and provides somewhat of a wind block. To build these walls, I use some 2x6s for the horizontal span and a few 1x4s for vertical support and a 4x4 for an extra support post. As far as which type of wood to use, it's usually best to use the same type of wood that your structure is constructed with, which on mine is cedar. But due to the current high cost of lumber right now, I chose to just use pine along with an exterior stain that somewhat matches my gazebo. To mount the 2x6s, I use these pre-assembled rail brackets made by Yardworks. These are made out of a carbon steel with a black powder coated finish and have tapered holes that allow the screws to rest flush with the surface of the bracket. So to start off with, I need to make marks where I want my 2x6s to be mounted. The 2x6s will be spaced at about 2.5 inches apart from each other and the bracket mounting holes are approximately half inch wider. So if I make my first mark at eight and a half inches from the ground, that will give the bottom two by six approximately two and a half inches of space from the ground. Then I can make marks at every eight inches going up until I reach 48 and a half inches, which will make my wall four feet high with two and a half inch spacing between the boards. So these marks indicate exactly where the top hole for each railing bracket will be located. And if you wanted to, you can adjust the distance between each board you can pretty much make the spacing as wide as you choose, but the minimum is somewhere around two inches because if you try to go any less than that, the brackets for mounting the two by sixes will start to overlap each other and not work very well. Now it's time to measure the distance in between the two posts where you want the half wall to be mounted. And you'll want to keep in mind that if your outside posts are not perfectly plumb, the measurement in between will vary going up and down. So it's best to go ahead and take a separate measurement for each 2x6 board location. After taking my measurements, I then need to deduct the thickness of two railing brackets, which on these is around 3 16ths of an inch. Then I can go ahead and make my cuts. Now it's time to attach the brackets to the ends of the 2x6 boards. These brackets have tapered holes on the outside for mounting to the post, as well as tapered holes on the inside, which mount to the end of the boards with the tapered holes facing out. To install these brackets, I just center them on the end of the board in both directions. Then I use some exterior rated screws that are one and five eighths of an inch long to secure them in place. So all of these two by six boards will end up with two brackets with one on each end. For an optional step, you can go ahead and paint the exterior screws that will show black in order to match the brackets. A trick that works well for painting the screws is to use a chunk of foam board that the screws can be pressed into and held in place while painting. Now it's time to start mounting the 2x6 boards in place starting at the bottom. And right here, since I don't have a helper to help me hold the board, I'm just using a chunk of two and a half inch thick foam, which helps hold the board in place on the opposite end. Now I will go ahead and secure the 2x6 to the post using some exterior rated one and five eighths of an inch long screws starting with the top holes on the brackets first, and these holes will line up with the marks I made earlier on the post. After securing the board on both sides at the top holes, I then make sure the board is level and plumb, then secure it with screws on the bottom as well. And if you do happen to have a bracket such as this at the bottom of the post, you will need to pre-drill a hole first before driving the screws. Now it's time to install the second board. So again, I'm using a spacer to help hold the board in place. Then I slide the board in position and line up the top hole on the bracket with my mark on the post. Then I secure it with one screw at the top hole of the bracket on both sides. After securing the top of the board, I then confirm it's plumb, then secure the bottom with one screw on each side. So from this point, everything becomes pretty repetitive. You just keep repeating the same process with each board until you reach the desired height of the wall you want, which for me is 48 inches. The spacing between each of my boards is two and a half inches, 
so it will take six 2x6 boards to reach a height of 48 inches. So this side is just about done now, but I have a few steps left. This half wall needs a little extra vertical support to strengthen it because as you can see here, the boards have a lot of movement to them. To correct this, I'll be using some 1x4 boards that will install vertically, spanning from the bottom board up to the top board, which measures at right around 45 and a half inches for my wall. And I like to have these supports installed within every four feet going across. My wall is right around 12 feet wide, so I will install two supports for this side. I also like to cut the top edge of these boards with a 45 degree angle cut, which provides a better appearance in my opinion. So these can be installed on the inside or outside of the wall, and I will just space these evenly across and secure them with two one and five eighths of an inch long screws at each two by six board location. And here is a look at the inside of the wall after installing the vertical supports. So these one by four boards help bond the two by six boards together and act as a stiffener, which makes the wall stronger. So now all I have left to do on this side is just a little bit of touch up staining on some of the boards and any other areas that may have got scratched while installing the half wall. And here's a look at the finished half wall for this side. Up next, it's time to move on to the opposite side where I'll show you how to add an extra support post for this type of half wall so you can create an opening to be able to walk through. And with an opening such as this, you could possibly build a gate for it as well, but that will not be covered in this video. So to start off with, I will run a chalk line centered in between the existing posts, then snap the line to mark it. So this will be the center line for the new post. Now I will use a Simpson Easy Base Wood to Concrete Adapter designed to work with a 4x4 post and place it where I would like it to be located which will be around 30 inches from the post on the right. And I would recommend to make your opening at a minimum width of at least 24 inches so you can fit through the opening with ease. Once I have the base in position, I then trace around the outside bottom of the base with a pencil and mark the holes as well. To secure the base to the concrete, I'll be using some half inch by three and three quarters of an inch long concrete anchors and to drill the holes, I'll be using a heavy duty hammer drill along with a half inch concrete bit. Now I will use this hammer drill and drill down one quarter of an inch at each hole on the base while holding the base firmly in position, which acts as a guide for the drill and helps keep the holes perfectly aligned. Next, I will remove the base and drill down the rest of the way to a depth of around three and one quarter of an inch. Then I can use some compressed air or something similar to blow any remaining drill dust out of the holes that can then be cleaned up with a broom. Now I can grab my anchors and thread a nut onto the end of each anchor which protects the threads from being damaged when tapping into the hole with a hammer as shown here. When tapping the anchor down, I like to leave at least a half inch or more of the thread exposed on the top side, which gives me plenty of thread to secure the anchor with a nut when ready. When tightening the nuts, you should get them just barely snug with the base first, then continue to tighten them another three to five turns until they seem nice and tight. If the concrete surface area under the base is on level, some half inch washers can be placed under the base and over the anchors where needed to make the base level before you thread and tighten the nuts. Now I can go ahead and install my four x four post into the base adapter and this is usually a pretty snug fit, so I will use a rubber mallet to drive the post down. As far as the height goes for this post, I like it to be around two inches taller than the height of my wall. For example, my wall is 48 inches tall, so my post will be 50 inches tall. Next, I need to confirm if the post is plumb. If it's not, I can usually just lightly push the post where it needs to be, as long as it's fairly close. But if it's really off, washers may need to be placed under the base as mentioned before. Once the post is plumb, I can go ahead and secure it with some one and a half inch long strong drive connector screws on both sides of the post where the screw holes are located on the base adapter. So this post is now done except for the post topper, which I will install here in a few. 
From this point, I can go ahead and start installing the 2x6 boards with the railing brackets attached in between. And this will be the same process as demonstrated in the beginning of the video. First, I measure the distance in between, then deduct the thickness of the railing brackets. Then I use these measurements to make my cuts to the 2x6 boards. Then I attach the railing brackets to the 2x6 board ends, which then become ready for installing as shown here. So I am just about done here. All I have left now is to add a couple 1x4 vertical supports to the inside of this wall as I demonstrated earlier. And here is a look at the finished product. So for the top of this post to give it a more finished look, I installed a solar light post top, which matches this gazebo quite well and provides a small amount of light at night as well. Here's a couple before and after pictures. This is the front side before and this is after. And here is the back side before and after. So with this type of half wall, you could install a wall for each side and have a more closed in look. But for our gazebo, we just wanted two walls, which gives us a little bit of privacy from the street and also provides us with some shade and a partial wind block as well. Okay, it's now time for me to go. If you like this video, if you could hit that like button and please subscribe. And have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.